Welcome to Insight, today produced in partnership between Alaska Public Media and M. Oppenheim TV. We are chatting with Beth Nordland, Executive Director of the Anchorage Park Foundation, which facilitates park improvement projects, and Beth has generously agreed to share some of her experience with us. I'd like to thank you, Beth, for joining us today, and let's talk about parks. Thank you. So the Anchorage Park Foundation is really the steward of this park network. Talk about the organization, its size, and the scope of its activities. Well, the Anchorage Park Foundation mobilizes public support for parks and trails in Anchorage. We're the nonprofit partner to the City Parks and Recreation Department. The Anchorage Park Foundation is 11 years old, and we came into being because the citizens of Anchorage told the then mayor that um, it was time to have a place to invest private money mm -hmm. and encourage volunteer support in other ways. So that's what we do. We use um, all kinds of public monies, so federal, state, local, bonds, uh, and we put those together with private dollars and materials and, and um, unique pockets of funding, and we build projects together. The great bulk of our projects are volunteer identified as mm -hmm. community needs. We've been doing challenge grants since 2006, funded by our great funder, the Rasmussen Foundation. It is unique in that uh, volunteers get to count their hours as contributions to their challenge grant, but uh, grantees need to match dollar for dollar the challenge. We give up to $40,000 per park improvement. We have an interesting and unique program, which is the report card that we use. So we have volunteers go out into their parks and analyze the assets that they have there, uh, which you'd be surprised at the results. A lot of people go out in the park that they love so much that it's part of their daily life. Uh, but, you know, you can, you can critique a park with love and um, give it a fix-it list that is quite a long list of things that need to get done. We use our community identified fix-it lists to raise the money we need to do the projects. And uh, there's nothing more rewarding than going to a community group, talking to them about um, how they can do report cards mm -hmm. and have someone from the back of the room say, I filled one of those out two years ago and we now have a beautiful park that got an A this year. <laughs> so um, you can really see um, the community involvement shine, but people like to identify the projects themselves. Seven years ago, some mothers of children that have some disabilities came to the Park Foundation and said, uh, can you tell us where the accessible playgrounds are? And we said, wow, we don't have any, and there aren't any in Alaska. So we got to work, um, and we built the first accessible playground for kids of all abilities. But in Anchorage, I'm proud to say we've built six inclusive playgrounds to date, and we have five under construction this summer. You have a, a neighborhood parks improvement uh, program. Uh, talk about that and how you define projects for that program. When we are looking at the needs of a neighborhood park, we go to the neighbors, we ask them to assess the condition of their neighborhood park, um, we identify a fix-it list that we think we can tackle and raise some money for. We have had wild success with this program, especially with our state funder, the Alaska State Legislature, mm -hmm. um, because legislators tend to see uh, bringing home, home resources to their own neighborhood as a great way to make a neighborhood happy for a relatively small investment. So there's a little funds. bit of a political hook in, in, in this. It's not in terms of politics, but in terms of understanding how people function in society. That you have voters who are voting for a person to hold office, and you become a way in which they can demonstrate that they are fulfilling that responsibility. 
Yes, meeting the needs of neighbors. Meeting, meeting the needs of neighbors. Let's talk about some of the other programs. You also have a program that, that I believe uh, you uh, founded, uh, which is the Youth Employment in the Parks uh, program. Talk about that. We employ teens ages 16 to 19 in the summers here in Anchorage. Um, they do a lot of work building trails, mm -hmm. um, taking care of our waterways, our habitat, you know, planting trees, um, doing the kind of stewardship that it takes to take care of our public lands. And um, that's what we're doing is we're creating stewards with the Youth Employment and Parks And this program. is very often the first job that, th that this, these youth uh, uh, have. So you're also helping them to understand the requirements of, of joining the workforce. Right, we, <clears throat> we often get about 220 applicants. We interview all teens that are eligible. So we'll end up doing 150 interviews. And by the way, we engage our community partners in helping us do those interviews because mm -hmm. they're really fun and that creates ownership in the program. Um, and then we, we're only able to hire 21 crew members. So uh, it's very competitive. It's very competitive, but it's a first job. We're not relying on past experiences. We're not relying on your grades. Um, and it does turn out that Youth Employment and Parks is a very diverse program. Uh, Anchorage has 97 languages spoken in our school district, and you'll often hear many of them um, by the teens in our program. We're very proud of the diversity. We're proud of the work they really accomplish. Um, but we also have an education component to the program, and we do recreation. Hopefully that's relevant to the work that they did. So if they build a mountain bike trail, we'll rent mountain bikes and um, allow Everybody them gets to try to... it out. Yeah, so they're experimenting with different recreation opportunities in Anchorage and um, learning a lot more about parks and public lands. Um, and then at the end of the program, we actually have a mentorship week, mm -hmm. which includes some job shadowing in fields that they're interested in. And um, we usually do some panels. They can learn about other volunteer opportunities or maybe the Peace Corps or, of course, moving on to um, college. And, the other, and we also have a, a financial literacy program that we do every payday, basically. Wells Fargo comes out on site and um, gives them a lesson on a lesson for payday that, that week. Um, it might be about college saving, might be about just getting a checkbook. So if you were to take a look at the dozen years, because the organization has been in existence for a dozen years. You were the first employee hired in 2004, and now we're talking in 2016. Um, those dozen years, how has the park been, how, how has the park system been transformed? And what is next for the Anchorage Park Foundation? We have improved 157 parks and trails. 157 in Anchorage. out of 250. 223, 223 parks. parks. Yes, we have covered a lot of ground in Anchorage. Um, but as you know, we have a lot of acreage to take care of. Right. And I would allege that a park system is only vibrant when its community is engaged. So um, we haven't seen any let up in challenge grant applications. There's been no you know, downturn in the number of calls we receive for assistance. Um, you know, with a four-person staff, we are always hopping, and we only deal with parks and trails. So, um, you know, there's just no limit to the amount of work that we can accomplish with the community of Anchorage. So let's talk about your, your, your trails initiative. So we've been working with the business community to attract contributions um, of volunteer and cash nature um, to our beautiful system of trails, um, which are clearly the jewel of our system and so well loved by the public. 66% um, of Anchorage say that they want to be using the trails more, and of course we have 250 miles of it, so um, 
plenty to take care of and plenty to do. We've been so successful with engaging neighborhoods and volunteer projects and things that they can achieve in their own neighborhood parks that we've been, I, I've created a new word <laughs> and it's called neighborhoodizing the trails. And we're looking to attract that kind of neighborhood support to our trail system. So we're trying to build affinity for our entire system of trails, but then also have people have ownership. Um, on a local basis. On a very, like a hyper-local basis, right? Right where they live. Um, I would compare it to a metro system mm -hmm. and say, you know, you know where, you're, um, where you get on and where you get off every day and what you have affinity for. And um, yeah, we're, we're trying to build community through our trail system. And they're so well loved, I think we can do it. Beth Nordland, thank you so much for sharing the work of the Anchorage Parks Foundation, and thank you so much for your insight. Thank you.